CPR and then we rotate, right? So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to have everybody rotating positions, but there's a three-person uh, version, this is the four-person version. Because of the size of the groups today, we may be doing the four-person version. So I'm just basically going to walk through the, the basic concept of how it's going to work. First of all, we're going to talk about the AED and how the AED works. Basically, there's two types of AEDs. There's an automatic and semi-automatic. Which ones do we typically use? Semi-automatic. Semi What's the difference? Semi-automatic. Yeah, the automatic, it shocks when it's ready, not when you're ready. So is there, that's the, typically the type that you're going to have uh, as far as civilian use. So obviously for, you know, for civilian use, they need to make sure, and it's going to give like a countdown, shocking in three, two, one, or something like that. The biggest thing that we need to remember when we're doing it is the person pushing the button is it their responsibility to make sure everybody is clear. Yes. Okay. And again, your eyes are on the patient, not on the machine when you push the button. Because if anybody had moved, I had a practice session where fortunately these are demo units where the person doing the defibrillation actually was had her knee touching the patient's arm. She cleared everybody but herself. What would have happened if that had been a real life situation? Well, we yeah. Exactly. Now, there's two types of uh, AED subcategories. We have what's called monophasic and biphasic. Monophasic, basically the electricity goes from A to B. Biphasic, the electricity reverses polarity mid-discharge. And those are shown in some cases to be more effective. Uh, now, in the biphasic models, you may see that it shows where to put the pads, but it doesn't specifically say this pad goes here and this pad goes here. Monophasic, the pads have to be in a specific placement. So look at the look at the diagram on the pad. It will tell you where to place them. Now, once I set it up, it's designed so I don't have to interrupt compressions to do it because where are the pads going to go and where's the compressions going to go. So the idea is it's not going to block uh, doing compressions. Now, under the current standards. As soon as you come in, we check again for unresponsiveness. If the patient's not responsive to painful or verbal, we do what next? CAB, you yeah. check pulse. You have no pulse, what do you do immediately? Compressions. Immediately begin compressions. Okay. What's the airway person going to do first? Okay. Start bagging. Okay. Make sure the airway is open, start bagging. <coughs> Third person is going to do what? Connect the oxygen. What's that? Connect the oxygen. Connect the oxygen. And after they're done, they're going to turn on the AED. Actually, we're not going to hook the oxygen up first. Turn the AED on first. Turn the AED on first. Because oxygen isn't going to bring bring them back. What's the only thing it's going to bring back? What's the only thing that brings back patients in cardiac arrest? CPR. Our aggressive CPR and AED. So basically, we're going to pump, we're going to weld. And we need to make sure that we're adequately pumping, we're adequately welding our patients. So, once it starts, remember the person that's bagging, where should our bags be? Right next to At the head. Remember, I'm doing CPR now. So that means I've got what? 30 compressions between squeezes, right? So, squeeze, squeeze. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Can we go ahead and get that out? You know, pretty quick, you know, say, because we're going to be doing what? About 110, 120 compressions. Bang, 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 bang. Still, can you open up that airway bag and say, get those, uh, get the airways out? Squeeze, squeeze. On the next rotation, should you be able to pull one of those airways out, size and place it, then squeeze, squeeze. Okay? You should be able to get that airway in without having to have any further assistance. Now, as soon as we have the ED up and running, we're going to do what? Push analyze. Push analyze. Okay. We have it hooked up, we have it running. It says analyze. Everybody's going to do what? Back off. Back off. Okay. And it's going to tell us one of two things. Shot. Or no shot. What are the only, there's only two things that means in this one. It's ready it's or it's ready. Ready. The machine is very smart and very stupid at all at the same time. It only knows two things. What are those two things? No. How does it determine that? Uh, rhythms. Which rhythms? Okay. Two shock rhythms. No. The machine only knows two things. The presence or absence of V 
V-fib, V-tech. Does it know whether it has a pulse or not? Nope. No, it detects what? Electrical activity, not mechanical activity. So that's why we must make sure that we have no pulse before we hook it up. Because VTAC can be present with or without a pulse. So what's going to happen if it says shock advised and you go to push that button just as you see the patient looking at you? Remember, don't, don't treat machines, treat patients. What's going to happen if I put an automatic model on that patient? It's going to shock them. It's shock them. Because again, VTAC can be present with or without a pulse. So we never place the pads on the patient until we assure there is no pulse. So, machine says shock advised. Person doing compressions does what? Resume yeah. compressions. Because the longest we can be off the chest is how long? 10 seconds. Ten seconds. It's going to take several seconds for the machine to charge up. So what are we going to do until it's charged? Continue to do our compressions. Once the machine is charged, then the AD person is responsible for doing what? Clearing the patient. As you know, I work down at the trough. I do the baseball games. What's the baseball sign for sick? Okay, so I actually I'll lean in my patient and I'll make sure it's what? Safe and shock. Because if I just go ahead and sweep my arms around the patient, am I gonna push anybody back and make sure everybody's out of the way? Yes. And then I go to push the button where my eyes gonna be? On the patient, not on the button. Easy to say, not so easy to do. Now, once that shock is delivered, we do what? Rotate 50. Or in this case, if we just started the sequence, we'll go ahead and stick, safe button, do that first two minutes. Okay? So during that first two minutes, first two minutes uh, interval, what should somebody be doing? Documented. They're, de they're still dead. Okay. We remember, we do two minutes, then reassess. Oh. There's really nothing to reassess on a dead person, not at this point. Get the king ready. Get your airway, get your tank hooked up, get your O2 hooked up. You got two minutes, should I be, uh, should I have that set up and running at the end of two minutes, as far as the king, get the king ready. Okay. Now, what's gonna happen is, it's gonna say push analyze. What do we do before we, we push analyze and then do what? Rotate. Person on compressions goes to AED. AED goes to airway. Airway goes to compressions. Okay, see how that's gonna work? So who's doing the most work? Compression. compression. So if I put the compression person AED, do they have two cycles before they have to come back onto the chest? Yeah. So that's the rotation that we're going to do. If you have a fourth person, the best thing to do with that fourth person is what? Document. Have them stand back and document. Because if you're doing stuff, are you probably not going to be able to get the big picture? Because what's the one thing? You're doing your little thing, but are, is somebody losing that 30,000 foot uh, view? So if you have that fourth person, that fourth person be documented. Do I have to document when the tooth's put in? Do I have to document when the shock is delivered? All that has to be documented. And also, what can they be doing? Asking questions. Yeah, asking questions. Okay, anybody know anything about it? Anybody know about history? Miss, what happened? Was he complaining of anything before he went down? You know, what's his sign? You know, does he like long walks on the beach? Whatever the case may be, find out what you can. Now, two minutes runs out, and during that two minutes, however, should we have that king in by now? Mm -hmm. yeah. But don't drop it in right away because how long has that patient been without oxygen? It's been a while because it's going to be probably close to 30 seconds, right? Because we stop everything to do analyze. Then we have to charge, then we have to shop. So, does that patient need oxygen now more than he needs airway? So about the one minute mark of that two minutes, got one minute of ventilations in, now I can drop that king. You're probably gonna need about a minute to drop that king in because I gotta drop it and do what? Confirm placement and? Check lung sounds. Well, that's checking placement and securing it with the tube holder. Now, you may or may not get done with the tube holder, so what do I need to do at the end of that? always take the bag off the tube because even if it's uh, stabilized if I just do that and the bag you know flops off could the bag end up jerking on the tube always disconnect the bag and take the bag with you and then once the shock is delivered what do you do put it back, put it back on begin bagging now once the king is in what changes with my compressions and ventilations continuous continuous, oh, oh, continuous which means what you don't stop uninterrupted uninterrupted breast at 
per minute yeah. and un uninterrupted compressions at 100 and 120 minutes. Okay, no pause for breaths. Once we have an advanced air, we have no pause for breaths, whether it be the King, LMA, ET, whatever. Now, once I get the King in, now I don't need to start thinking about packaging this patient. So, remember, the person that's going to be free to do most of the things is going to be the fourth person. If I don't have a fourth person, who's probably going to be doing the grunt work? AD. AD, because they're only needed when? At the beginning, and basically when we do the two minute uh, cycle, right? So again, we hit the two minute mark. What do we do? Push analyze, rotate. Which direction we rotate? Remember, compressor to AD, AD to airway, airway to compressor, okay? So everybody can see how that's gonna work. Next thing we need to do is we're gonna get this patient packaged for transport. One thing we haven't talked about much in airway management, but a patient that has got an advanced airway in, we're going to secure them to a board. We're also going to think about putting a collar on. The reason we do that is not because we suspect spinal injury, but for what? If I reduce head movement, do I reduce the risk of the tube being dislodged? Yes. Absolutely. Now, when do I reassess tube placement? Every time, every time, every time the patient's moved. In a cardiac arrest situation, how often is that going to be? at least six times. Think about it. If they got even on the board, or the stretcher, stretcher the truck, stretcher in the truck, stretcher out of the truck, stretcher in the hospital, stretcher on, uh, off the stretcher onto the hospital bed. So there's several steps involved. Every time that patient's move, you check it. Your last check is gonna be just before you pass them off to the ER staff before they come off your stretcher. You wanna ensure that the airway is patent before transfer of care. Or otherwise, they're gonna blame who? Not us. Absolutely. So, what will often happen is people will get distracted. That's especially true when they're putting them on the board and you start to strap them down. Because next thing you know, everybody's doing strapping and nobody's doing what? Nobody's doing compressions, nobody's doing ventilations. Ventilations, we can delay for a while. And when we do the roll, take the bag off. You're not going to be bagging while you're rolling. And you got how much time there? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Remember, 30 seconds for air. 10 seconds for heart. You think of it that way. So, getting a package, and we're gonna eventually get into that, but we're just gonna start by just doing some rotations, make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Uh, and then we're gonna actually get into the logistics of packaging. That's when things get complicated. It's gonna be even more complicated when we're talking about uh, at the ALS level, because now if I got an IV hanging or something else I gotta deal with. So there's a lot of tubes and wires involved here. O2 tubing, uh, IV tubing, wires for the AED. So again, it's real easy for stuff to get yanked or, or, or pulled off or misplaced. Okay. Bit of a, logistic, a, a logistical issue. So, uh, so I'm just gonna, I need uh, three people because I'm gonna act as the fourth person. So I need three people to come down. We're gonna run through one. Simple, we come in and are we gonna do your usual things, say BSI, la 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 la. Now, we come up to our patient, we go down, the patient in this case uh, does not respond to verbal, no response to pain, check pulse, I have no pulse, so I'm, okay, come up, somebody starts compression form. okay, the other person, get the, get the BBM out, start the bag, okay, and then we're going to get the AD, set the AD up and let's go, I'm going to walk through how to do this one. What you want to do is first thing you do when you open up the back the box is what? You turn on and the little little lady that lives inside will tell you what to do from there. Because she's going to tell you to do what? Connect. So, I'm going to connect my electric. You're going to do continuous compressions Push until he's ready. Now, this one here, uh, you notice we have the pads that have to go in a specific spot. This one's got a little bit of wind on it. Of course, it's a little short on it. What's that? No, I was just telling him when he wants me back to say so. Okay. I'm just going to place the hand. Ah, two breaths. He's got the two breaths in, remember? Right. So, at this point, we push analyze. Stand clear. Analyzing now. now off the chest, Stand remember? Clear. You're all three analyze. No shock advised. Okay, so what will we do then? Start CPR. Immediately begin CPR. 
Now, if this was programmed for shock, what would we do? We charge, and then he would continue to compressions while charging. Okay, and then what would I need to do? Again, what did I have to do in this situation? Get him out of the way, and then I would put my finger on the button, and then where are my eyes going to be? On the patient. Okay, now we're going to keep here until we finish that two minute cycle. Now, what can uh, the fourth person be doing? Is what? AD person or fourth person? We need to get that hooked up. To get that hooked up, flowing up what? We're not going to hook it up at this point. We're going to simulate what? 15. 15. Okay. Now, next person, once you're done with that, you're going to start setting up the king. I don't, it's not over here. <laughs> it's quite a bit. Remember? Charlie Compart. Okay. And right now we're coming up on the one minute mark. Whoever's at the AD needs to keep an eye on the time. So to these guys, do they need to have an idea of where, when things are going to happen? Yeah. So, okay, you got another minute. You got 45 seconds. Maybe about a 15 minute countdown. The last 10 seconds, say 10 seconds. And in this case, we're at 45. There was a hell of a lot of pressure. Every single person in this room staring at you. Right? <laughs> so you want me to take production? 30 seconds. You want that thing to be ready to go on the next cycle? Yeah. 20 seconds. And I don't know why you guys stopped compression, but. Sweet. <laughs> in the real world, how easy is that to happen? I'm just going to wait and see how long you wait. Wait. Five, four, three, two, Okay. So what do we do now? Rotate. Compressor goes where? Okay. You can go in it? Okay. And then, then I'm going to eat. You did. You're ready to compress it. We're going to have you there. Just leave it at the head. That's where it's going to be eventually. Push out. Stand clear. Analyzing now. Stand clear. Shock advised. Back on compressions. Oh, no, no ventilation, just compressions. Stand clear. Push to shock. That's not shock. No, you just turn it off. <laughs> I thought they made this EMT proof. I have been proven wrong. <laughs> okay, push on why. You push the one that's flashing. Okay. Now let's pick up where we left off, shall we? No shock advised. Okay. Stop okay. Now, during this rotation, we're going to wait about a minute and do what? Yeah. Place the king because we want to give ourselves at least one minute to place and confirm and secure. In this case, the person that preps the king, in this case here, it's going to be the AD person, is going to hand it to the person that's uh, at the head. So, in other words, the person at the head actually puts it in. You put it in, and then this person, the AD, is going to be ready to do what? Confirm placement by listening. Okay. Once placement is confirmed, then the person at the head continues to bag. What changes with the compressions? Continuous. Continuous. And then the AD person will be responsible for what? Securing the two. Okay. At the end of two minutes, what are we going to do? Rotate. We're going to continue to rotate. Generally speaking, you should have this patient packaged and ready to leave within three shots. Now, or three rotations. Now, I'm going to have you guys hold for just a second. I meant to turn it off. <laughs> now, so, if it says no shock advice, what does that mean? What does it mean? P A no shock advice. It's not picking up on that. It's a mechanical issue. It's not in VTAC and it's not in VTAC. Remember, I said, what's the only thing the machine knows how to do? Presence or absence of V50 tag. So that's all it means. Now, we want to check pulse. If, if you feel a pulse, then what? Stop. Stop. 
Okay, well, you, you would have stopped the compressions anyway, that's true. What about uh, ventilation? If you want to recheck airway and breathing, we got an airway in at this point. Remember, patients rarely start breathing right away. Because what makes the heart uh, beat? We'll talk about this today. The heart makes the heart beat. Automaticity, remember? It's the only, it's the only organ in the body that can do what? Generate its own signal to contract. So, what makes the lungs work? The brain makes the lungs work. This is multiple choice of chest. <laughs> you're, you're coming up with answers I wouldn't even put on there. So here's the thing. Do I have to reboot up here before they're going to start breathing again? Yes. Yeah. So does this have to work long enough to get this back up and running? Yes. So what are the odds you're probably not even going to have a patient breathing by the time you get to the hospital? Pretty high. Pretty high. So our focus is going to be on rescue breathing. What about the machine? What do we do with the AD? Keep it on. Keep it on. Okay, and it's going to tell me to do what in two minutes? And what if that patient's in VTAC? But with a pulse. You get a pulse back, disconnect the machine, turn the machine off. You don't need it. You, you fix them. Well, temporarily. You know. So, but don't let it go too hard. Do not take the pads off the chest. Because if you take the pads off the chest, are you going to be able to get them back on that well? No. Leave the pads on, disconnect the machine. How often should I be checking a pulse while I'm on route to the hospital? Maybe five. Five is a long time. What if you? What if he goes into cardiac arrest? Is five minutes in cardiac arrest a long time? Yeah. One to two minutes tops, and then oh, I don't feel a pulse anymore. What do you do? Turn it on, plug it in, and analyze. Okay, and. If you're in route and it's just you in the back, what do you do? Yo. Tell your partner we got to, we're in arrest. Have them pull over, and then get back in there because now we're probably going to end up having to get some more resources on scene. Because can I be back there by myself going to the hospital with a patient in cardiac arrest? Not really. So chances are you're going to pull over, call for backup. Both of you get in the back, begin compressions, and use the AD as needed. Questions on that? Okay. It'll make sense once we do it, and you're going to be really, really fun to watch the first couple times we go through. Uh, at least I'll have. At least I'll have. Uh, but anyway, is this something that you're just going to have to knock down? Is this? This is probably the biggest teamwork thing that we really do. Because does everybody have a specific job at a specific time? And here's the thing: your job changes every two minutes. But does that physician's job not change? Because you know maybe maybe today you're left front tire, you know, and then next time you're right front tire. You know, how are the situation be like with a real pit crew? Understand the duties and responsibilities for each position. Now, if someone sees something that is not safe, can anybody on the team point that out? Yes. Yes. Should anybody on the team point that out? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. What do we know about if they're on a metal surface? They need to move them. What if they're in standing water? Yeah. What now? Again, they don't. They can be damp, but they can't be wet. Okay. Uh, be careful of jewelry. You got the Mr. T uh, gold chains going there. How good a, how good an electrical uh, conduction is gold? Pretty good. Good. So what's going to happen if if my pads are touching a necklace? Nothing good. Had that happen one time in my career. Um, and I wasn't paying attention, popped her, and literally what's going to happen is it's going to dump the entire electrical charge from one pad to the other. So it's like doing this. Now, the good thing was my supervisor was on scene, so we used this monitor for the rest of the call. The bad part was my supervisor was on scene. <laughs> but anyway, just keep, just keep an eye on things. Uh, any other questions as far as sequences? Okay. All right, I think we can hold there.